Ash Wednesday blessings to all of you on this sacred day. Welcome to everyone from all parts of our world who are joining us for worship on this Ash Wednesday, February the 22nd, 2023. There's we're going to be a few more announcements later in today's video, but since today is a more solemn day, we will, as we always do, begin with a word of prayer. So let us pray together. Gracious God, out of your love for us, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and our acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, in a normal worship, we would continue with a song, but today is a bit different, as Ash Wednesday is all about repentance. It's about turning around and facing our fears and our faults and beginning our 40-day journey through Lent to the victory on the cross. And so today we begin with a shortened version of the Ash Wednesday Confessional Prayer. I will guide your responses as we pray. As you can see, I'm going to kneel for the prayers. And so as I say the response, please repeat it after me. Now, I ask that perhaps if you can kneel, perhaps you kneel. If you can bow your head, perhaps bow your head. And if you can't do either, it's okay. God still loves you, and so do I. Let's begin. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Please say with me now, have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Again, please say after me, have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, the hypocrisy, and the impatience in our lives. Please repeat, we confess to you, O Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, our exploitation of other people. Please repeat, we confess to you, O Lord. Our anger and our own frustration, our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, please repeat, we confess to you, O Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, please repeat, we confess to you, O Lord our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, please repeat, we confess to you, O Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Now we all say, accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we repeat again, accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, and once more we say, accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, 
let your anger depart from us. We all say now, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. And now we all say together, amen. We now hear our opening hymn, Amazing Grace. Good evening, Church. Our Ash Wednesday Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here ends the reading of the lesson. this Ash Wednesday, huge winter nor'easter. I walked over to church at least six times to blow the snow with the snowblower and to shovel the snow. And as soon as the snow stopped, I was here to shovel for the better part of two days. Now, if you think I'm complaining, I'm not, not at all. Well, maybe I am just a little because absolutely no one showed up to help, but that's another sermon for another day. My point for today, this Ash Wednesday, is I got to tell you, there are very few things in this life as beautiful as this city after a fresh snowfall. Everything is crisp, everything is clean, everything is bright and shiny as far as the eyes can see. Cindy and I walked up the Hillside Avenue to get a newspaper and it was wonderful. There was nothing better, nothing more glorious than Hillside Avenue and the sidewalks covered with snow. However, the problem comes after the snow. You know how it gets here in the city. Just after snow, sometimes in just hours, everything gets slushy and dirty and messy. The trash that was buried deep under the snow starts to poke its head out as the snow melts. There is garbage everywhere. There is dirt everywhere. Everything is dusty from the salt. You can't even keep your car clean if you wanted to. Right after the snow, there is absolute beauty. But not too long afterward, there is absolute mess. And it all gets kind of depressing, doesn't it? It all gets kind of depressing, but if you really think about it, maybe there's no better image for our lives. We are born soft and sweet and innocent and beautiful, bright and shiny and perfect, even me. But, and you knew there was gonna be a but, didn't you? It's not too long after that. It's not too long and the real world 
sets in. And all the trash of life, the dirt, the mess of our humanness gets a, gets a foothold and everything starts to change. We go from beautiful to messy in the twinkling of an eye. And that's what today is all about. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm not just talking about a snowstorm here. Because that mess, the dirt, the grime, the pain, the sorrow, that is exactly what this day is all about. Today is about the dirt. Today is about the mess. This Lent is all about the mess, the dirt. And in the midst of the mess, finding God. In the midst of the mess, finding restoration. In the midst of all the messiness, finding wholeness. And it starts today. It starts today because today is about remembering that you are dust. Remembering that you are messy. And being reminded that today is about remembering that to dust you shall return. A stark reminder. A stark reminder of our messy humanity. You know, if you were able to get one today on this Ash Wednesday, the dirt of the ash of the cross on our foreheads, well, it reminds us. It reminds us that we are human. And it reminds us that we are messy, that we are less than perfect. And even if you couldn't make it to church to get ashes today, yes, we gave out ashes today. Even if you don't have ashes on your forehead, go. Go take a long, hard look in the mirror and you might just see them because the ashes and the dirt are always there because they remind us that we're human. They remind us that we are prone to failure. The ashes remind us that we are human and we can't make anything else of ourselves but human. The ashes remind us of the dirt of life. The ashes remind us of all the messes we've made in our lives. And the ashes remind us that we are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. Ash Wednesday is all about the mess. Ash Wednesday is about looking in the mirror, looking deep at that face, staring back at you and seeing the, the mess on our forehead. Dirt to remind us of our dirt. Dirt to remind us of our sin, our messes and our imperfection. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, because Ash Wednesday is all about the dirt. And so Lent begins. Lent does not begin with giving anything up, but Lent begins with a long, hard look into the mirror of our lives. You know that I need to say that again. Lent does not begin with giving anything up. But Lent begins with a long, hard look into the mirror of our lives. Lent begins with a smudge of ash on our forehead. It begins with acknowledging the dirt and acknowledging God with a contrite heart and a broken spirit. Lent begins with confession and repentance. And if you can do that, Truly and faithfully, as hard as it might be, if you can do that, that's where the good news of this day can be found. Yes, our world has thrown a lot of dirt our way this past year, but you know what? We've, we've created a lot of dirt too. And that's why this day is so important. For the good news of this day is that there is a better day coming. I know, I know that soon and very soon, a better day is going to come. A brighter day is going to come. The sun is going to shine and the beauty of the earth will once again shine through the darkness and through the gloom. There is one coming who will clean up our messes. There is one coming who will make straight our paths. There is one coming who will clean us up, make us whole and wash away all the dirt and grime of this life in one supreme act of grace on the cross. In that, there is restoration. In that, there is redemption of whatever messes come our way or whatever messes we have made. But you see, the good news of Ash Wednesday 
It starts with the dirt. And it ends with the one who cleans up our dirt. The one who brings beauty back into our lives. And the one who calls you back to the cross. Yes, I'm talking about Jesus. I am talking about Jesus and he is the reason that we are here today. Because we know, we trust, we hold fast to the promise. The promise of true faith is faith that better days are coming. We know that true faith is faith that God will be with us through all the grime and all the slush of this life. We know that true faith is knowing that the victory of the cross is coming. We know that true faith is knowing that all the dirt and grime will one day be washed away. True faith is knowing that when we sing, my faith looks up to thee and mean it, there's healing within. True faith is knowing that God cannot wave an almighty hand to make the grime and the grief of life go away. But true faith is knowing that with God's help, we can get through it, we can get through it. For now, Lent begins. And all we can do is look in the mirror, acknowledge the dirt, repent, turn around, look squarely into the eyes of Jesus, and be clean. Be free, because today is all about the dirt. And today is all about Jesus. So keep on the path this Lent. Don't get sidetracked. Don't give stuff up. If you can, if you can do it, instead of giving stuff up, Take something good on. And who knows, you might just take on a whole new life. Amen. And now our hymn of the day, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. My faith looks up to thee of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart Strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, oh, may my love to thee, pure, warm, and changeless be a living fire. While life's dark maze I tread, and grief around me spread. Be thou my guide. Bid darkness turn to day. Wipe sorrow's fears away. Nor let me ever stray from thee aside. When ends life's transient dream, when death's cold sudden stream shall o'er me roll blessed savior then in love fear and distrust remove oh hear me safe above a ransom soul We continue now with a closing word of prayer, the Lord's Prayer and the benediction. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their sins and their wickedness and live. Therefore, we implore God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit, that those things may please God which we do this day and that the rest of our life may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And we all say together, Amen. And now receive God's benediction. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us for Christ in the waters of our baptism, strengthen you on your Lenten journey to new life. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. I have two rather large announcements tonight. One is to join us this Sunday, we hope, for worship in the church building on this first Sunday in Lent at the regular worship times and every Wednesday in Lent this year in the church building at 8 p.m. for our special sermon series, Unpacking the I Am Sayings of Jesus. You know, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, etc., etc. That's in church every Wednesday in Lent at 8 p.m., and online every Wednesday in Lent at 7 p.m. First Communion classes start this coming Saturday morning in church at 11 a.m. And this year, that is for anyone of any age starting at nine years old. Until we see you again, take care. May you all have a blessed and a holy Lent. But for now, let's sing. Take care, everyone. We'll see you Sunday morning. We close with, O oh God, our help in ages past.
us in the fight.